Hello everyone, um, I know this is the third video I've done today, so sorry that uh, there are so many, but I wanted to give each book its own personal um, space because I didn't want anybody to have to fast forward. If there was a certain book you were looking for a review on, I didn't want you to have to kind of fast forward. So, the last one that we are, uh, that I'm going to do today is B.B. Easton's Sex Life, 44 chapters about four men. It's a memoir, okay, so, and it is a Netflix original series. I have not seen it. So, um, what is it about, right? Sex Life, 44 chapters about four men is a laugh out loud, funny, and brutally honest look at female sexuality. As told through the razor sharp lens of domesticated bad girl, B.B. Easton, no one and nothing is off limits as B.B. revisits the tattooed and testosterone uh, fueled ex-boyfriends who led her to finally find true love with a straight-laced drop-dead gorgeous accountant after starting a family with her perfectly vanilla husband ken bb finds herself longing for the reckless passion she had in her youth she begins to write about these escapades in a secret journal just for fun but when ken starts to act out the words on the pages bb realizes that she might have stumbled upon the holy grail of behavior modification techniques the psychological dance uh, that ensues is nothing short of hilarious as B.B. wields her journal like a blowtorch, trying to light a fire under her cold, distant partner. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But in the end, B.B. learns that the man she was trying so hard to change was perfect for her all along. So my thoughts and views on Miss Easton's book. So how do I say this? Um, as for disclaimers, uh, let's start with disclaimers. Now, let's start there, right? Disclaimers, a lot. If you have any issues um, with, you know, a bad sexual past or bad partners um, or, you know, I wouldn't, I would not read this. It might take you down an internal rabbit hole that you might not want to journey down. So, with that being said, um... I applaud the courage of Miss Easton for writing this, and it was obviously really, really popular, and so I am I am alone, I think, well, not alone, but I don't think many people share my opinion of Miss Easton, and this is actually a gift, so to the fabulous bestie out there that gave this to me, thank you so much, you are so wonderful, um, and please, no matter what I say, don't, don't, please don't take it uh, in a bad way, because I love you, and I'm so thankful and grateful for the gift that you gave me. You know, so I just want you to know that. I want you to know that before I say that I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of this book. I will not reread this book. And there are a couple of reasons why. One, I wasn't a huge fan of her writing style. Uh, I thought that it was very kind of, I just wasn't a fan. I didn't, you know, I'm not huge into like, literacy I don't I don't need like it to be poetry I mean don't ask me to interpret poetry I'll, I will suck at it I will be literal the whole time but I just wasn't a fan of some some people's writing styles you're not a huge fan of it I I didn't like hers I also didn't like the story so I just found out whenever I was looking up um you know how much they cost and where that this is the first of four there are four of these adventures I don't know if, I mean, I might give a second one a, a try and maybe it'll change my mind. I have an open mind. So maybe the second one, you know, might make it where, you know what, I come back and I, I actually like it. This one I didn't like. I felt like, one, I didn't like that she was manipulating her husband. And there is no judgment here whatsoever. Everybody has a different relationship and I would never, ever, ever presume to tell anybody how to live their life. For me, it's just, I'm very, I'm a very honest person and I felt like deceiving your partner because you couldn't have that hard conversation of, you know, being unsatisfied in the bedroom to me is something that a teenager would do and not someone that in a, in a committed relationship. And if your partner isn't able to have those conversations with you, you know, is just difficult. And I, I remember her, you know, kind of saying at some point of like even, you know, faking orgasm or faking it in the bedroom. How is your partner who is reading your cues to learn what you like and what you don't like? You know, and I understand you can do that in a way without crushing their, their ego or soul or spirit in the bedroom. There's a central way that you can lovingly tell them that. But if you're giving off false cues of like, oh yes, I love this, 
your partner can't tell that and then they can't trust you physically to and you know looking at a person's body as they're moving and you're doing intimate things in the bedroom is a huge indicator of how to how to treat their body and so i think i did not like the dishonesty it hit me in a very very ugly way i didn't like it i didn't like that she was putting it down on the journal and then like pretending that she didn't know he was reading it or whatever and i just i just didn't like I didn't like the fact that he was snooping through her things to, you know, get into her privacy. I'm like, why aren't you guys having a conversation? You're married. You've been married. You have children. Sounds like you guys need a date night to have a conversation about, you know, the different things that you guys are feeling and going through and being able to work and grow through those as a couple. So, and again, that is said with no judgment. Please don't, you know, if BB Easton, if this is your true story and that, you know, this was, please, 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 I adore the courage and the, you know, what it must take to write a book and to put, if this is your story, the courage to send that out there in the world, that's got to be very, very, you know, a courageous thing to do. Um, so this is, this is just my take on, on how I feel, what, what I felt about it. So please don't, please don't come egg my house. Um, <laughs> please don't, you know, egg my house or, um, rip my face off in comments or anything. I hope that I can be as respectful and honest in my critique about this as, as I possibly can be without being cruel. I would never want to be cruel to you, um, to anybody. So I didn't like, um, and then when it came time for the erotic scenes in the book, I didn't find them erotic. I found a lot of them very rapey. Um, I found a lot of them in, in, I think, you know, I kind of had a troubled, uh, teen youth. And so some of them were not fun feelings. I would read it and like the cigarettes everywhere and party. And I was like, oh, that's a fun reminder of, you know, my youth. I don't want to ever think about ever again. So that's not her fault. But it's just like the things that the men were doing, the men she was picking. And that probably emphasizes, you know, how much more she loves her husband. But the partners that she was picking, I'm just like, oh, sweet thing, please don't. I'm just watching this train wreck unfold. And I'm like, oh, God, stop, you know. I did not, um, it was, it was difficult to watch her choose the partners that she chose and the things that she allowed them to do to her. And I am, and it, I'm only speaking out of, I dated some terrible, terrible characters. So I'm just watching it going, no, you deserve better. Um, so it's, it's speaking from, you know, experience and I just watch it. I would never want anybody to date these people that are freaking they need help they need some love and they need therapy they need something before they date another person um and so the comfort that she's getting from these bad boys you can definitely have that bad boy demeanor without you know without destroying another person or in learning for you as a person where to draw that line so whenever i'm reading that as you can tell it wasn't it wasn't my favorite book that i've read but but in Miss Easton's defense, her book made me feel, and that's what it's supposed to do. Even though it wasn't positive feelings, I'm not feeling super happy, but the, I feel things nonetheless. So I hope I didn't give away any spoilers in this review. I, those are the reasons I wasn't a fan. I wasn't a fan of, of the dishonesty, but if you like, I mean, there, there was, so if I'm trying to think of why you would want to read this book, if you like um kind of it's almost kind of like she has relationship intrigue and her and her bestie's in on it so it's kind of like if you like that where they're kind of fooling the husband and the husband you know trying to get him and he is kind of cold and unfeeling it sounds like maybe he's a little bit of autism um but so you know maybe trying to get him to feel or understand him in a deeper way and tour in the book i i think that might have come across i still just didn't like the way that that she treated her partner again maybe i will give i will give a sec the second book a try just because it's only fair it's not fair for me to read this one and just be like she sucks i hate it she's terrible blah, blah, blah. i should give the another book a chance to see if if maybe the story evolves i personally wouldn't watch this and if any of this is on that youtube or in the netflix special i absolutely will not watch that it does not sound like a good time for me but maybe that's your cup of tea. Maybe if you like it a little more like, you know, 
maybe conniving type thing that if that's your if that's your thing and you like it absolutely go for it there's no judgment from me whatsoever where can you get it so the book was written in uh, 2016 i forgot to say that at the beginning you can get it anywhere from four bucks on thrift books four bucks all the way up to 18. let's see amazon eight bucks for kindle so you can read it on kindle um or anywhere from 12 to 27 dollars and then barnes and noble is like 18 bucks lusty meter is a seven to eight i'm going to give her that prop because there is a lot of of a lot there's a lot of a lot of sex there's a lot of sex obviously it's in the title a lot of sex i i wasn't a fan of of a lot of them i mean like the you know spontaneousness of of you know a couple of the of a different scenes might have been okay but it just doesn't it overall i'm just like oh gosh i'm like just ken oh god that like some of the partners and the like the the rock mode. I'm just like, and maybe I'm old. I'm, I'm 34 and I'm a mom. So maybe the fact that I have teenagers, maybe if I read this book whenever I was younger, I might've felt differently. Now being a mom, I'm reading it and I was like, oh no, like, I have a 16 year old child. Like, oh, please don't, you know, make these choices. And now I feel like I have to run off every mail that comes over to see my kids ever to be like, oh my God, no. So those things uh, might bias me just as a heads up trying to be honest with that so okay 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 rambled on that one long enough maybe you should check it out just because you know now I've intrigued you to be like oh god what is she having a tissy about and then you can get in the comments and be like that one isn't that bad you've read much worse so yeah please tell me let me know please give me comments feedback fuel if there's any books that you would like me to read uh please let me know and that is it for me this week guys thank you a million times for watching and I hope you have a fantastic weekend.